Oi, we're up against a wall again, Radan. Your favorite. Hide the hide your weapons. Or just make this an actual nightmare. Apple, please. I'm gonna need you to like pop over or something. Oh god. Oh. I don't know why I did that. Why didn't I parry that? Oh boy, what are we doing now? Oh, we're halfway over. That's actually really nice. Please just drop. Oh, cross. How has he not rotted yet? Apple over. Come on. Apple. Apple. Why am I saying Apple? You're next to me. What? I'm losing my mind. Ugly, but it did it. Please die, please die, please die, please die, please die, please be dead, please be dead. I am the best. 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 Are you looking at me? I am the best. Okay. Holy hell, this was difficult. Oh my god, that was difficult. Okay. Okay. Right. That fight is horrible and is the worst fight in the DLC by far, and I hate it, and I will never do it again. It's the last time I'm ever fighting that fight. <laughs> 
the build. Blood Misery Cord. Bleed is nice. I mostly wanted the bleed for the big chunk of damage getting him into phase two, so he spent less time in phase two because phase two is very obnoxious and very bright, and I don't like it. Cold Dance by Rapier for the frost buildup because frost procs are really nice and 105 is a nice amount of buildup. I did have the rot, but I could not rot him in phase two. Uh, I even tried with hefty rot pots after he came down from his big, you know, what he normally does at the start of phase two, the big gold circle that does half the arena. I tried throwing hefty rot pots while I was coming down from that and I was able to throw like three of them once and he still didn't rot, so I don't know how you rot him, honestly. Um, the Scavenger's Blood Curve Sword was mostly just on to Seppuku at the beginning to set up Red Feathered Branch Sword. Talismans, Riding on Soul Seal, stats, um, Red Feathered Branch Sword, 20% damage when low health. Dagger Talisman for the extra crit damage, and the Iframe Talisman because I can't dodge him at all, <laughs> apparently is what I learned after fighting. Strength and Dex Not Tears in the Physic. That is the build. Obviously, I need to show off. We are level 1 with no blessings. No hit, Consort Radan, level 1, no blessings. To quickly go over some of the problems, because I was writing them down in a notepad to the side to try and keep me calm while I was going through my, I think, nearly 9 hours of attempts this took. It was a lot of attempts. I will count them, and I will also count separately how many times I've tried to parry his foot, because that will be a funny number. Um, evasion blocks, after he stomps his foot sometimes, with the spikes that come up if you're on uneven terrain. Evasion blocks if you fight him too close to a wall, as his weapon can get hidden inside of the wall. Evasion blocks on his cross attack if you are too far to his side, because he can hide his weapon behind his own body. Um, he vision blocks sometimes after the lion's claw with his own body, or sometimes his cape. He can vision block with the lights in phase two during like his two clone attack where he does like the sweep across. That can vision block. Um, the terrain effects can stop you being able to parry, because you can get dead angles where the attack goes over your shield and hits you anyway. Um, yeah, this fight is horribly inconsistent. Uh, anyone that has fought it and tried to no-hit it, I'm sure knows how inconsistent this fight is. But there we go. Fight complete. Um, that is going to be the end of this Elden Ring, rune level 1, no blessings, no hit run. Um, I think the only one I didn't know hit was Jory the Inquisitor, and that was only because we beat him on, like, attempt free while I was still practicing with the bubble, which is kind of funny. But he's not a remembrance boss, so we'll take that. But yeah, that is all of the important bosses in this DLC. 